Hi, my name is James Clem. I really enjoyed being at Dent Supply Sharona World 2017. <laughs> they really know how to put on an energy-packed session. I had a few questions about my presentation in the Venetian Theater about creating thin margins. I talked a lot about the emotional side of dentistry, and um, I did throw in a few things about uh, 4.5 in the, the current version of that, which is 5.1. I really like this software, particularly for anterior teeth and biocopy and thin margins. The milling algorithms are profound. How do I create a thin margin? Well, I like the EF Burst system. A lot of people don't have that unless you have the right MCXL. However, with the traditional burr, which is the 12 on the left, it's not the 12S. That's a smaller size on a tip. That's about 0.85, whereas the S burr is 1.35. You're gonna get a lot cleaner mill. There's several things that we have to do to sit up a thin margin. It's the condition in the mouth. Number one, the tooth shouldn't be in front of us. It should be bouncing with normal occlusion. Number two, if they already have a lot of recession and of fractions, it's not gonna work because you need enamel in a cervical margin. You don't wanna be doing a significant shade shift. Why? It's gonna be thin ceramic. You wanna blend that ceramic into the cervical color. You can do a slight shade shift, but not a significant one. You don't have to bury the margin. You can keep the margin super gingival or even an onlay at mid contour of that tooth. If you put a thin margin in there, you can melt that margin using a warm cement. So you have to use a brighter ceramic, but that's for another lecture. So that's the condition you need to use when you're going thin in the mouth. Now the CAD CAM Sharona system can do that, particularly with the EF burr system. But if you don't have that system, the traditional burr on the left, these are your parameters. You want your minimal axial radial thickness to be 300 microns. Marginal parameter, minimal thickness, 120. Those are two parameters that work together. Use refined mill, don't use the fast mill. Using that approach, you can get a thin margin without it chipping. So there's a little finishing to do once you mill your restoration. Now, I like to use lithium disilicate Emacs for my thinner restorations, either MT or HT. There's several things we need to do once the restoration comes out of the milling unit. Number one is we need to thin it down where we had to bulk it to prevent chipping. I'm gonna use the green Meisinger polishing wheel. That's on the JK03 Meisinger Clem Institute Lab Kit. We're gonna thin it down, but we can't go too thin. We don't want it to chip. We're gonna crystallize and then do the final thinning. Again, with the green Meisinger polishing wheel, we're gonna thin that down to just a hair's width. In fact, you can actually see through that margin. I like to finish these before I cement them in. They need to be on enamel. Once you bond that in, using good adhesive protocol for both the ceramic and the tooth, these restorations will last a long time. I've been doing this for years, even with macrofelspathic veneers. When it's on enamel, you have an adhesive interface, both the ceramic and the tooth. I call that biologically monolithic and it will last a long time. But occlusion is really important. You can't have a tooth that's been traumatized by a lot of lateral shear force with that chewing biofunctional mechanism that the patient is going through. So I hope that helps. I really like doing conservative restorations. I really enjoyed my time speaking in this great convention. Uh, I really appreciate what Shrona, particularly the Shrona side before they were Dent Supply, has done for my career. I love the system, both comb beam and also my CEREC and my milling units, and I love to teach. So I hope that helps. Until next time, you take care now. <music>